You know I couldn't let this go under the radar for that long, right? Today we are talking about a guy who has been one of the best defensemen in this entire generation's worth of NHL play. By that definition, is he a generational defenseman? I don't know. Maybe at one point you could have said he was, but then he got injured and things slowed down a little bit until last year where Eric Carlson had himself a 100 point season for the San Jose Sharks. He dominated. He feasted on the NHL. And even though you had writers, Voters, NHL people, scouts, executives, etc., who always seem to go to sleep whenever 7.30 p.m. PST San Jose Sharks games start on, Eric Carlson's season was noteworthy enough that he won the Norris Trophy, and it was a very well-deserved one. In fact, you could say that Eric Carlson last year might not have even been his best. Like, there was a period when he was with the Ottawa Senators where he was a 70-80 point defenseman, where you could debate he might have just been better back then. League scoring was down, defenseman scoring was down, Carlson was in contention for the Art Ross at some point throughout that tenure, and he was a dominant force in the NHL. It's why he's got multiple Norris trophies to his name, not just one. So last year's season, even though it was a highlight, even though it was a Norris winning year, even though he did get 100 points, the first defenseman to do so in 30 years, you could debate that last year, because scoring was up, especially compared to the days when Carlson was a senator, you could say that he might not have even been his best last year. But today's video is going to go over a much different aspect of Carlson and his career. What I wanted to talk about was the curse. Because with the San Jose Sharks being so god-awful this season, you kind of have to think and sit back and say, wait a minute, even though Eric Carlson was playing on such a terrible team, he still was able to get 100 points. Okay, maybe the guy really did deserve that Norris. Maybe you could say that he was that gosh darn good, because as we had talked about in the Canucks vs. Sharks video from last week, you know who's the number one power play quarterback for San Jose now that Carlson is gone? It's Kyle Burrows, and I'd be willing to bet that the majority of people who watch this video who don't happen to be Canucks fans don't even know who Kyle Burrows is. Like, he was a tweener defenseman on the Canucks last year, and now he's the number one power play guy because the Sharks have nobody else. That's how bad this team has gotten, and that's how good Eric Carlson had to be in order to will that team to some wins while also getting 100 points in the process. Now, the Sharks have been so terrible this year that... Everybody is talking about the recent 10 goal games. You had Vancouver versus San Jose the other night where the Canucks won 10 to 1, and then the very next game the Sharks let 10 goals in again against the Pittsburgh Penguins, which by the way is the team that Eric Carlson is on now. And the reason I'm making this video and titling it the way I am, The Eric Carlson Curse, is because for some reason, this guy just seems to find himself ways to stick on bad teams. Sure, when Carlson left the Ottawa Senators, he was coming off hot, off the tails of a third-round Stanley Cup appearance. It was so good, Chris Kunitz kind of ended the Ottawa Senators in overtime and then spiraled that franchise to a very bad path of doom, but two years after the Carlson-led Sens made the third round, Carlson gets traded to San Jose and he makes the gosh darn third round once again. The team lost to the St. Louis Blues, and the Blues ended up winning the cup against Boston. Eric Carlson had been a part of those two runs to the third round, all while his point production suffered because, you know, playing with two guys that are just phenomenal right-handed offensive defensemen in Brent Burns and Carlson definitely didn't bode the best for the franchise. But other than that, it took Carlson a while to become great. It took him a while to get that 100-point season. But now, in Pittsburgh, he's kind of regressed to where we sort of expected him to be. I mean, you could debate that some of the same issues in Pittsburgh that were there when Brent Burns was present in San Jose are still here, because, hey, you've got two right-handed guys that are so good, Chris Letang, Eric Carlson. Carlson is no longer the only guy on the blue line that has an appropriate role as a top offensive contributor. You have Letang. You have to be cognizant that he exists and there are minutes to give to him. So Carlson's point production right now is at 8 points in 10 games played, on pace for about 65, which is not bad. Definitely not bad, especially at the dollar amount. There was some salary retained when he was sent over to Pittsburgh. He's making $10 million a year till the end of 2027, so that's a long time that he's going to be sticking around there. 
But I bet you're probably wondering, okay, this is all fine and dandy. Why are you calling this a curse, though? Why are you saying that Eric Carlson is cursed? Well, here's why. Last year, the San Jose Sharks sucked. They drafted fourth overall, took Will Smith out of the NCAA, pretty good. And they're even worse now that Carlson is gone. But for the Pittsburgh Penguins, a team with Crosby, Malkin, Latang, Gensel, and Carlson, a team that was supposed to be Kyle Dubas's just dream scenario, let's say last dance type scenario. Hey, we've got an aging veteran core. These guys want to go out there and win some more. This is the final few years that they're going to be able to do that. Eric Carlson was supposed to be the big fish that helped this team get over the hump and get that done. But so far, I mean, the Pittsburgh Penguins, they're last in the Metro. Ten games played, four wins, six losses. They have fewer points than the Blue Jackets, the Flyers, the Caps, every other team in here. I mean, look, the Blue Jackets and the Flyers have a reputation for being that bad. The Pittsburgh Penguins, I mean, you could look at some of these numbers and say, oh, their goals four number is pretty all right, their differential is not that bad. That's because they won 10-2 against San Jose the other night. Pittsburgh benefited as much with the stat padding against the San Jose Sharks as Vancouver did because now the Canucks have so many players in the top whatever it is of scoring for goals, assists, points, and especially for defensemen. Pittsburgh, inadvertently, it just happens, it's inadvertent the way they were able to use this game against San Jose to make their stats on paper not look too terrible, but it doesn't change the fact that they are still last in the entire Eastern Conference. They're tied with Ottawa. They are literally 16th. How in the hell does Eric Carlson go from a team that is that bad in San Jose, it becomes even worse when he leaves, and now he's on a team in Pittsburgh that was supposed to be much better, and they've gotten worse too. This guy has to be cursed, dude. Leaving behind a trail of misery everywhere he goes. San Jose, sad now. Ottawa, sad now. That Sens team is in purgatory the way they're not improving. And now you've got guys like Brady Kachuk standing up to the fans saying, hey, it's not right for you guys to boo us. Like, with all the ups comes all the downs too. And with third round appearances for the Sens and the Sharks, Eric Carlson departing has left a wake of terror. He's bringing that over to Pittsburgh and now... I can't help but look at these situations and say, yeah, that guy is cursed. Of course, I'm only joking. Like, this video is tongue-in-cheek, whatever, but it does illuminate a very weird pattern that has consistently presented itself throughout this guy and his career. Like, how do you even begin to quantify the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows, and how the negative always seems to follow Eric Carlson around? My question to you is, if you're a San Jose Sharks fan, what are your legitimate expectations on wins this season? Do you think you win more than 20 games? I mean, it kind of sounds ludicrous to think of a team that goes 19 and whatever, 63, but like, this team is so bad that it doesn't seem like that much of an impossibility. If you're a Pittsburgh Penguins fan, what are your thoughts on the way Carlson has played for your team, and where do you see this team in general going in the next few years? Crosby, Latang, Malkin? Sure, you guys are pretty good. Pretty standard, I'd say. But like, the rest of the team not pulling their weight, the results, they're not there. Is this Kyle Dubas' fault? What do you think Dubas should do now? You know that guy was always under a heap of pressure in Toronto? It seems like that's carried over and followed him to Pittsburgh too, just because of the way the Penguins have performed this season. Last in the East, literally tied for last. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this Eric Carlson pattern. If you're a Sens fan, or if you're a Sharks fan, if you're a Pens fan, what are your thoughts on this guy? And how weird is it that every situation he's a part of seems to have a looming cloud of misery on top of it? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Irish Rolls 99. And bye.